Hello, fiendlings. How the hell are you? It's been a ridiculously nasty summer down here in Tejas. In case you didn't know, the state has been in drought for about a thousand years, and we were beginning to think we were never going to see rain again. The past couple of days, however, have provided us a few good thunderstorms that actually did more than spit at us. In short, my grass is growing again. I was hoping this summer would finally do it all in, but no such luck, because I have to keep mowing it. In other news, extinction is past the 50,000 word mark. I looked over what I'd written more than a year ago, figured out what to keep and what to dump, and began folding it in. I was only able to do that because I spent the day working on the timeline to figure out where everything fit, which also spawned a few new scene ideas. I uh, still haven't written the beginning of the story. Go figure. Now it's time for me to take care of more audio mischief and get back to writing. Be safe, have a great week, and we'll talk again real soon. Here's episode 14 of Station 3. Chapter 19 Zilf stood to his full height and activated the plasma torch. The blue teardrop grew, its end a deep crimson. He touched the torch to the top of the frame and drew a bead. It wouldn't take long to free the door, and although he could probably knock it down by barreling into it, he didn't think that was a good idea. He and Yuri had no idea what was inside, not to mention any damage that might have occurred. He could smash down the door and fall through a damaged deck. Hurry up, Yuri said. No real cover here. Just keep looking for that thing, and mind the vent, Zilf said. The torch had cut through seven centimeters of the steel. He turned down the power and moved to make a vertical cut beside the horizontal one. After firing up the torch again, he continued cutting. What the fuck was that? Yuri asked. Looked like it used to be. He broke off before finally finishing the thought. Human. Zilf continued cutting. I don't know, he said. Get the feeling we're missing a lot of information here? Yuri was silent for a moment. Station 3. They built it after the rest of the stations. That doesn't sound planned. No, Zilf agreed. And from what Harvey said, it sounds to me like Shen Shou found something they wanted to research. Yuri snorted. What could you possibly want to research in a subsurface ocean this far out? Something that turns humans into I don't know what? Zilf had finished another few centimeters. Maybe, he broke off in mid sentence. His external mics picked up a sound that he barely noticed, something like a human trying to breathe through flooded lungs. You hear that? Hear what? Yuri asked. The door rocked in its frames, the metal squealing and protesting. The center of the door started to bulge. Zilf jumped backward and clipped Yuri on the side. The fuck? Yuri yelled. Move! Zilf shouted and took two more steps backward. The door buckled in its frame, a dimple appearing in the steel. Zilf waited a beat to give Yuri a chance to get clear before taking another step back and lowering his plasma torch toward the door. What's going? Boom, another dimple, this one larger. The door shook in its frame and Zilf caught sight of something green and brown through the gap between the door and its frame. Boom. An inhuman scream echoed throughout the large room, the sound making Zilf wince. When it subsided, Zilf heard another sound he liked even less, movement from above. They're in the HVAC, Zilf said dumbly. The door shook in its frame, the metal grinding and squealing. Zilf didn't wait any longer. He set the plasma torch to a narrow focus, aimed it at the gap in the door, and activated the tool. A six-centimeter-wide cone of plasma erupted from the tool, the blue flame shooting through the gap and roasting whatever was on the other side. The thing inside the cleaning station roared loud enough for his audio system to clip the sound. The steel door, out of its tracks, bent to hell and partly cut, slammed down to the deck. For a split second, Zilf did nothing. The torch continued spraying plasma, but it was just roasting air. His brain had frozen as he saw what was coming out of the cleaning station. The thing had collapsed to the ground, its misshapen head a parody of human features. Three eyes stared at Zilf, a yellow one that was merely a slit, another that looked like a dead and milky oval and the last, a perfectly formed and shaped human eye with the most beautiful blue hue he'd ever seen. Its face, a mishmash of amphibian and mammalian features, glistened in the light. A thick line of greenish drool dripped down from its short, barbed brown snout. 
The thing's torso was at least a meter and a half long, but loose folds of flesh bunched up around its rear, its six muscular legs already flexing to leap at Zilf. Something clipped Zilf hard in the shoulder and he spun sideways and several steps from the open door. The creature blurred past him as it leaped. Zilf stumbled, caught his footing, and turned. The creature had landed in front of Yuri, and instead of coiling to spring again, the thing raised itself up on only two of its legs, the other four punching the air with its sharp claws. Yuri slammed his tool arm into the thing's torso and activated the torch. Another inhuman scream and a jet of fire pushed through the creature's back, boiling liquid and streamers of burning flesh filling the air. The thing didn't try and flee. Instead, still making that awful keening sound that hurt Zilf's mind, it pushed forward, Yuri's tool arm sliding easily into the hole it had created. The thing's four arms clamped around Yuri's suit, its barbed snout mere centimeters from the suit's neck joint. It punched its head forward and smashed into the armor. Yuri yelled in Russian and spun hard, throwing his tool arm outward at the same time. The thing flew off his arm and smashed into the bulkhead. Once down, it flipped over, its legs still on the deck, steam rising from its boiled insides. Zilf started to run toward the creature to help Yuri finish the thing off when something struck his right leg. He yelped and tried to turn just as that same something wrapped around the limb and pulled. He activated his magnetic boots to hold firm and took a quick look down at the leg. Two long, thick fingers had locked around his calf and the pressure increased like a vice. Not sure any of this was really happening, Zilf pointed his torch at the fingers and goosed the power. For an instant, the teardrop became a short rod of blue fire. The fingers let go in an instant, a shriek of pain nearly blasting out his mics. Zilf turned, the plasma torch setting fire to the air in front of him. The thing that had originally attacked, the creature that had nearly penetrated his armor, had gotten behind him. The hunched animal clutched its one wounded hand while the whip-like protrusion from its back whistled above Zilf's head. Yuri yelled again, but Zilf hardly noticed. Without thinking, he ran at the thing, torch held before him like some holy relic to ward off evil. The creature's horror show face of eyes and a circular maw filled with razor-sharp teeth seemed to grin. Something Turtle noticed, even if the shark didn't. When he met the creature, he didn't plunge the tool arm through its torso. Instead, he tackled the beast, his massive suit smashing it to the floor, the deck shaking from the impact. With the creature pinned, he raised his non-tool arm and punched the thing's mouth. Cone-like teeth exploded from the maw, and the creature made that sound again, the one like all the demons in hell shrieking at once. The creature's whip appendage, mostly trapped beneath it, arced and thunked against the deck as it tried to find a way to hit its attacker. Zilf punched again and again, short-lived geysers of greenish goo spurting with each hit. The creature writhed beneath him as it desperately tried to buck him off. Zilf put the plasma torch directly against the creature's mess of a head and set it to high. The plasma roared through the torch and burned a hole straight through the creature's skull. The creature went limp, its whip clicking one last time and denting the deck. Zilf kept the flame burning for another beat before returning the tool to standby mode and raising himself. When he turned, he saw Yuri holding the other creature at bay with short blasts of plasma. The six-legged monstrosity had stretched itself out, the loose folds of flesh taut. The thing was a full three meters when uncoiled, and despite the massive hole in its chest, was still advancing on Yuri. Zilf grabbed the dead creature's body and stood. The servos complained, and he guessed the thing had a mass of at least 200 kilos. No problem for an EET, he idly thought as he flung the dead thing. The corpse flew through the air, its whip idly arcing before it crashed just behind Yuri's assailant. The thing turned in an instant, its body scrunching up like a spring. Zilf advanced, and the thing caught sight of his motion. It swiveled faster than he thought possible and sprang at him. He had a moment to prepare himself, raising his arms and crossing them in front of his helmet as well as reactivating his mag boots, before the creature leaped atop him. The instant before it hit, he pushed his arms outward to meet the mass and leaned forward. Even with the massive suit, and even with his mag boots locked to the deck, Zilf teetered backward from the impact. The creature didn't fare better, though. One of Zilf's outstretched arms acted like a pike and pierced through the thing's shoulder. Its snout smashed into Zilf's helmet again and again as it tried to find a way in. One of its many clawed arms scrabbled at his suit's neck joint. Shark! Eats! Sylph yelled, 
deactivated his mag boots and ran as hard as he could for the bulkhead. The creature screamed and shrieked as the massive suit carried it into the rigid steel wall with a bang that shook the room. Impaled and crushed up against the bulkhead, the thing snapped at him, its legs kicking and protesting. Zilf pressed forward as hard as he could, locking his mag boots down and using them for leverage. A sickening liquid burble guttered from the thing's broken, battered snout. Zilf pulled back his free arm, set the power assist to full, and pistoned it forward into the creature's head. It was like hitting a watermelon with a sledgehammer. Gore splashed across his suit, the bulkhead, and filled the air with spatters and droplets. The creature stopped moving. Panting hard, Zilf stepped backward and allowed the thing to fall off his arm and to the deck. He whirled around, plasma torch jetting dangerous blue, looking for another target. There wasn't one. Zilf, Yuri said. You okay? Zilf flinched at Yuri's voice, but kept himself from turning. One of the servos in my tool hand is damaged, and I've got some armor damage, too. Nothing too serious. You? About the same, Yuri said. Damn thing kicked my left leg. Got a hell of a scoring there. Servo's still working fine, though. The two men said nothing for a moment, but their rapid breathing said all that needed to be said. Zilf continued searching for targets, even as his thoughts hummed with adrenaline and blood pounded in his ears. His external mics picked up the sound of something crawling through the vents above them. Zilf looked up at the few still closed vents. I think we need to get out of here, Zilf said. Da, Yuri said. Like yesterday. Clear the cleaning station. I'll cover. Copy. Zilf continued checking the room, flicking his eyes back and forth as he walked slowly backward toward the cleaning station while making sure he stayed out of Yuri's way. The big Russian walked to the front of the cleaning station, his torch held before him. Jesus, Yuri said. Zilf, it's clear, sort of. Zilf raised an eyebrow. Enough room for me to enter? Yes, get in here. I'll cover the entrance. Zilf paused one last moment to check the open vents in the room. The sounds of something moving above them continued and greenish drool dripped down from one of the far vents. Gritting his teeth, Zilf turned and made his way inside the cleaning station. Chapter 20 The cleaning station was a disaster area of broken equipment, shattered armor, green goo, and spatters of dull, dried blood. A piece of flesh on the deck might have been intestine. Zilf managed to swallow his gorge at the site, even though what he'd fought outside had been much worse. Maybe that was because he no longer thought of these things as human. They weren't. Man is a monster, Zilf's father had said while he perused the news on the hollow, his head shaking sadly. For all the things humans have accomplished, for all the planets we've discovered and colonized, we are still little more than savages. The story had been about a massacre on one of the space stations. A member of the staff had apparently had some kind of breakdown, poisoned the HVAC system, and ended up suffocating an entire module. This person, his father said, either through mental illness or basic disregard for other life, murdered these others, probably filled with co-workers, families, breakdown of humanity. His father paused and Zilf had seen a glisten in the old man's eyes, probably thinking of his long-dead wife and Zilf's long-dead mother. Monstrous. Well, father, Zilf thought, now I've seen real monsters and they aren't human. They used to be, his father's voice said in his mind. Used to be, Zilf muttered over the mic. To be what? Yuri asked. Nothing. Yuri stood at the open door, his plasma torch covering the ingress. If anything tried to get inside right now, it was going to meet ethereal fire. Once the station removed an operator's suit, the driver shed their inner suit, took a decontamination shower, donned a fresh jumpsuit, and headed down to the next level via a set of stairs. The opening to the stairs had more blood and goo on it than Zilf had believed possible. Too much blood for one person, Zilf said. He scanned the rest of the cleaning room. But no corpses. Yeah, Yuri said. Where the fuck are the bodies? Zilf shivered. The opening to the next level did have a security hatch. Good. Something they could weld shut behind them. But first, they had to do what he most definitely did not want to do. We have to go down, Zilf said. If there's a hatch leading to the emergency tubes, that's where it will be. Duh, Yuri said. He took a step back from the open door. If you cover me, we can put the door at least back in the frame. It's warped, but if we weld it, it'll at least give us a little time if something tries to come through. 
Zulf considered that. It wasn't a bad idea. Not entirely practical because of whatever might still be on this level, or above them, waiting to pounce. It also meant neither of them would be able to cover the stairs leading down while fixing the door in place. I think we go down, Zulf said. We held the security hatch behind us. If they're in the vents above us, they won't be able to get down. Not this way is what you mean. Zulf shrugged. Best we can do? Apart from just imploding this module? I don't know about you, Zilf, but I didn't sign up to, well, fight those things, whatever they are. Zilf knew how he felt. From what they'd seen thus far, he doubted any humans hadn't been... transformed? Unless these creatures were something else, maybe something indigenous to the planet. But that didn't make sense. These creatures had human features. Distorted, misshapen, malformed, but still recognizably human. He remembered the infected in the medical bay, their flesh rippling as if their human bodies were chrysalis, waiting to birth something new and horrible. The things they'd just fought in fully kitted out EET suits and suffered damage from were more dangerous than any organism he knew of. When an EET team rolled in on a sabotage or a hostage situation, they usually destroyed the aggressors with ease, unless the combatants also wore EETs. But these things were different. Biological they might be, but those stingers, or whatever you wanted to call them, could damage armor. The creatures were large enough to nearly knock over a heavy EET. This was not normal, to say the least. Set a charge at the door. As soon as we descend the stairs and weld things shut, detonate it. Unless they come a little faster. Yuri grunted, but Zilf could hear the smile in his voice. One charge coming up. A grim smile crept across Zilf's face. That covered their backs. He turned to the entrance to the lower level. All he had to do now was to send the stairs, perform a quick clear, and get Yuri down to finish the job. So easy, Sylv said to himself. Just one step at a time. To Yuri, he said, I'm going to clear downstairs. Just enough to get us some room. Room, Yuri said. Don't care about room. Just make sure something is not going to jump us. It won't, Zilf said. It'll jump me instead. Um, Yuri said after a beat. That's not what I... Shut up, Yuri, Zilf said. Just keep things off my back. Copy, Zilf. Kitch your ass back up here if you hit trouble. Fuck that, Zilf said. You hear me screaming, you come to me. Something outside the cleaning station made that inhuman keening sound again, punctuated by booms of creatures moving through the vents above them. Right, Yuri said. Fuck that. Get to moving. Zilf took a deep breath and walked to the first of the steps. Apart from his suit lights... The room below might as well have been pitch. The staircase, barely wide enough for an EET suit and barely tall enough to boot, was a claustrophobic and tactical nightmare. Zilf had no room to move as something came at him. With that in mind, he pulled the wrench from its slot in his back and held it in his free hand. The wrench, a solid bar of tungsten that had been shaped into a multi-headed tool that served as a wrecking bar, a bolt shield, and, if you were in a damn tight spot, a weapon, was the most versatile item in an EET's loadout. Zilf had never used one to bludgeon someone, but between the wrench's mass and the strength of the suit, he had a feeling he could bash one of the creatures into paste. If it came close enough, that was. The whip that had damaged his armor had been two meters long, at least. That was too far away for him to reach. Shark eats, his father's voice said. Zilf nodded and took another step down into the darkness. Turtle can fucking think later, he said to himself. One step, two steps. Fifteen more to go. His lights illuminated streaks of blood on the floor below, the debris of smashed and obliterated furniture, and Allah only knows what else. From his vantage point, he could see not only directly in front of him, but had a good view inside the rest of the level. No bodies. Instead, damage, goo, and chaos. Zilf reached the bottom of the stairs and found himself in a 5 by 5 meter room, for lack of a better word, with rubber padding covering the steel deck. Spatters of dull red and a wretched green dotted the nearly black material. Sylph panned his lights around and found the only egress. A luminescent sign with the word lockers glowed to the side of a meter and a half wide hatch. It was tall enough for he and Yuri to enter it, if they both knelt. Not exactly reassuring. He backed up to the bulkhead furthest from the stairs, lights still scanning the relatively cramped area. Zilf held his breath and listened as hard as he could, reflexively cocking his head to one side, as if it would help. Nothing. Not even the hiss of air from the life support systems. Yuri, I've got a little space down here. How little? 
Large enough for you to get down here and help me clear this place. Excellent, the Russian said. Let me back out of here. You know, Zilf, Yuri said. Bears can see in color? Zilf continued panning his lights across the portions of the room he could see. Really? Da, Yuri said. Zilf could hear him on the staircase now, but didn't turn. Any fish on your planet do that? Yuri asked. Considering our water, our sky, and our star are radically different, I'm not sure color matters much. But yes, several species react to change in hue. Interesting, Yuri said. Yuri was whistling in the darkness, and Zilf couldn't blame him. He had unknown threats below him, unknown threats behind him, and no backup. Zilf was suddenly glad he'd come down the stairs first. Four more stiffs, and I can close the security hatch behind me, Yuri said. The sound of the Russian's heavy metal boots clinking on the stairs. You can tell a bear's age, Yuri said, following a metallic bang. By looking at the rings in a cross-section of its teeth under a microscope. Yuri's plasma torch came to life, and Zilf heard the sound of him welding the plate in place. Doesn't that make the bear unhappy, pulling its teeth? I think the bear is usually dead. The plasma torch ceased, and Zilf heard a hard bang. Good as I can do, Yuri said, and descended. Shit, a hatch. Yeah, Zilf said. Lockers or bust. He paused for a moment after hearing a slight pant in Yuri's breath. You okay? Yuri giggled, but the sound made Zilf uneasy. Yeah, just... He paused. What the fuck, Zilf? An explosive boom reverberated through the level, the two men practically jumping at the sound. Zilf looked at Yuri. Your demo charge? I think so, Yuri said. Either that or something else exploded up there. Zilf took a look up at the welded security hatch. We need to move. As if on cue, something bashed against the hatch. Da, Yuri said. You first. Zilf groaned. I'm always first. Not true, Yuri said. I went first before. And when was that? Yuri was quiet for a moment before turning his helmet to look at Zilf. Well, fuck it, the Russian said and walked to the hatch. Cover? Covering, Zilf said. He set his plasma torch to a half-meter-wide cone and stood a couple of meters behind Yuri. Opening, Yuri said, and pressed the manual door release. Nothing happened. Huh? Yuri said aloud and punched it again. You'll have to be kidding me. We can cut. Yuri lifted his right leg, reared back, and kicked the hatch. The bottom of Yuri's boot hit square near the lock. The sound was like two girders smashed together by a monstrous manic monkey. The hatch crumpled inward and twisted off its track with a squeal loud enough to make Zilf wince. The Russian kicked again and the entire hatch broke free of its mountings and crashed to the deck with a vibration Zilf felt through his boots. Yuri's suit lights blasted away the shadows in the room beyond. In some ways, Zilf wished it hadn't. The 15-meter-long, 7-meter-wide room had three rows of orange-colored lockers with built-in benches. The dividers separating the rows rose nearly to the ceiling, although the lockers themselves were less than one and a half meters in height. From what Zilf could make out over Yuri's shoulders, it looked as though a few of the lockers were open while others had been battered or maybe crushed was a better term. More goo, more blood spatter, more death. Moving in, Yuri said quietly. Copy, Zilf said. Yuri bent at the knees in order to give Zilf a clear line of fire into the room, and Crouch walked inside. The Russian cleared the right corner and then the left. Moving left to the far locker row. Copy. Coming into cover. Zilf watched Yuri disappear around the hatchway before stepping forward and into the locker room.